in the same way that you don't think that you're going to get cancer. I didn't think that I'd ever have to freeze my eggs. Will any of them survive? I just never fell pregnant. Do you want to have kids? Do you not want to have kids? We have declining birth rates. The cost is prohibitively high. Women would come in and say, no one ever told me. How late is too late? It's a question many future parents face when contemplating having children. An Australian family used to look like two kids frolicking among a picket fence line suburban home. But now, more than ever, such a picture is fading, with fertility challenges disrupting the path to birth. The following is a story about creating life, the complexities that can emerge along the way, and the unique nature of the journey it encompasses. My name's Imogen Mason and I'm 21. I was 20 at the time, at the end of 2023, and I was tired, really, really tired. I felt a lot of pain one day that wasn't normal. I couldn't stand up. And so I went to the emergency room where they did a bunch of tests and scans through a bunch of doctors looking at all of my results. They concluded that I had ovarian cancer. This was sort of over Christmas time. And it came back that I needed to do a lot of chemo. But between doing chemo and having my surgery, I had to do egg preservation. I was very vulnerable, I think, at the time, because being told all of these, you know, you're facing your own mortality. So being told these things, which are concerned with that, I could probably be dead, but also I could probably live. So let's weigh up all of the options on both of those sides. It was a lot. It was a lot, actually, to deal with, yeah. The most popular reason is that elective egg freezing, but it did actually start as a technology for fertility preservation for people that were affected by a diagnosis that may affect their fertility or who might require a treatment that it would affect their fertility. What we do is we're able to provide a quick streamlined access to getting a quick consultation, a quick workup, and then access to quick treatment because obviously time is of the essence usually for these people. In a random start, egg freezing cycle. Um, we can take some blood tests, see where they are within their menstrual cycle and often start treatment that day. You're very much at the whim of everybody around you. You learn very quickly to place a lot of trust in people who know more than you in the same way that you don't think that you're going to get cancer. I didn't think that I'd ever have to freeze my eggs. It was just, oh, if that was a problem later down the road, then maybe consider it. But now I'm 20, I don't have to deal with those things. Of course not. And then all of a sudden, yes, I do think about these things. It is the one surefire way to have a little bit of control in what is otherwise something that is completely alien to you. You make the decision to have your eggs out and to have some sort of security in your future if you want kids or even if you don't, the option is there. I joke now, oh, my kids are in the freezer, so <laughs> they're waiting for me if I ever want them. They're waiting. I was still 30 and I decided to get a health check to see what my fertility was because it was something that I knew potentially would be an issue. Early menopause tends to run in the family. And during that check, I did find out that I had a low egg reserve. And also I found out that I have a unicorn uterus. So I only have half, half of the anatomy. So it was a lot to process all at once. And then that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to start egg freezing just so I can get as much as I can now. I didn't think I was going to be someone that would use IVF. I purely was just getting a check just so I could have peace of mind. Just how much lower was more of the shock for me. It's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying um, because I had worked really hard to have a family and you know, I was telling myself, my goodness, have I delayed having kids too long and I've ruined my chance? Um, there's always that wonder, like, will any of them survive? And I, I just keep telling myself that, you know, I have a big chunk of or a lot of frozen eggs at a younger age, which is really good. You know, if I had delayed this later with a low egg count and older eggs, my chances would have been much, much worse. Something else that can come up when we're coming for a routine check might be very unexpectedly they have low ovarian reserve which means 
they had a few eggs left and they, their fertility window is much shorter. I think knowledge is power. If you understand your fertility, you have the knowledge to make realistic plans for the future. If there was a, the ability of these scientists to look at the eggs beforehand and a test that was 100% accurate, that they could look at an egg and say, this egg will result in an ongoing pregnancy, we can discard the almonds. That would be amazing. That would be amazing because if a woman is freezing eggs, she could know that she's frozen some good quality eggs. So many times I'm asked more about the quality of the eggs. We don't have that test at the moment. We only know if an egg is a good quality egg if it fertilizes successfully and later on results in an ongoing pregnancy. I, I think being able to determine if an egg is going to work in a non-invasive way, that would be a, a wonderful breakthrough. I didn't choose to have half a uterus or a low egg reserve, but it's, yeah, it's extremely stressful to be able to finance, to finance this. I'm, I'm 34, 35 by the time we get married and um, and naturally just thought, oh, you know, I'll fall pregnant in the next year or two. Like, it'll just happen. And, of course, it sort of wasn't happening. So then we moved straight into our very first egg collection. Little did I know I'd end up doing, I think it was 13 or 14 of those egg collections. So I just went straight into the next month, transferred the second one, didn't fall pregnant, and I was like, all right, well, third time lucky, transferred the third embryo, and I actually did fall pregnant on that third transfer. And long story short, that ended up with an early loss at seven weeks. You know, when you start to realise this is, this is the most out of control I've ever felt about something in my whole life, and I can't affect it maybe I'm not supposed to have a baby. Like you start just these silly things start running through your head of like, you know, is this not our path? The doctor was like, this is it. This is the one, like cycle 19, it's gonna be the one. And I didn't fall pregnant. And I just remember like, just being so devastated that, cause you know, you miss out on things. You don't wanna go to things. You just kind of put life on hold, I guess. Cause it just feels like you're in limbo. It just feels really lonely. It feels out of your control. You feel, yeah, just shameful. We can never guarantee that a frozen egg will result in a pregnancy and will make a baby. Really, you should be focused on the lab because 70% of the magic happens in the lab. You know, that is your chance of success and your outcome is influenced by the quality of the lab. Now, achieving a pregnancy does not mean that you'll necessarily have a baby from that pregnancy because the miscarriage rate is unchanged. Whether you're pregnant with fresh eggs or frozen eggs, whether you're conceived naturally or with IVF, the miscarriage rate under 36 in a non-smoker, the background risk is 10 to 15%. There's this um, egg-freeze sisterhood, I call it, that's developed out there where women are quite openly talking about egg freezing and one in three egg freeze patients I see will come in and the first thing they'll say is, my older friend said to me, don't do what I did, don't delay. We're absolutely not pushing egg freezing. What we're pushing is the conversation and women being aware because it doesn't happen so much now, but it did happen five, ten years ago that women would come in and say, no one ever told me. A connection that I had met along the journey reached out to me and she was just like, you need to go and see Dr. Nick at Monash IVF. The last guy you see when you're in this mindset of giving up. We sat on this Zoom with Dr. Nick and he was like, so essentially you guys can't have kids together. You've got this genetic match. It's called DQ Alpha. Um, Emily, you reject Mark's sperm, so you know your uterus just just doesn't recognise that Mark's sperm is not like a virus, and so this is why you would just keep not falling pregnant or you know miscarrying. So when someone was like, "I've got a plan, we've got some answers, like let's go," we were like, "We're in." <laughs> Thank you.
that cycle worked, like our 20th cycle worked, I just knew I was pregnant. I could feel it. And the line came up, like the two lines came up straight away. I passed him the pregnancy test and I've got, I'm videoing him and just the look on his face, he was just in shock. He's like, like, what, what does this mean? And I'm like, it's worked, like we're pregnant. We called him Maverick because we wanted a really strong name, which means like go your own way. And um, we thought just with the little boy that he is now and, and knowing the journey that he has been on, it's like, yeah, he, he is who he is for a reason. I think even on the hardest days, you know, you just look at him and it's just like, I know, I know who I've become on this journey. I just look at him and I think, what if we had have given up? Like, what if we didn't get that second opinion? Like we wouldn't, you know, I can hear him now upstairs and he, and we wouldn't have that laughter in the household. 13 months on, it's just like every day we just look at him and we're like, just imagine if we didn't keep going, you know?